I'm Beth Yerksa. I'm executive director here at Triangle Artworks. Uh, and um, I thank you for attending. Um, oh, yes, got to meet it. Um, thank you for attending. This is Healthcare and the, and the Working Artist. Um, we're glad to have you here. Um, I would be remiss as an executive director of a nonprofit if I didn't um, preach the gospel of Triangle Artworks and our work for for exactly a minute and a half before we start. Um, for those who know what we do, um, we are a nonprofit um, that serves the Triangle Arts community as a business sector. Um, that means we work to create programs and resources to help those of you working in the arts sector um, um, to succeed as businesses. Um, perhaps more importantly, we are working to create a center point for the arts as a business community um, to increase the power and the presence uh, of this community as a business sector. Um, we all know that and we all are very well aware that although the arts community here has a huge impact on the economic bottom line and has a big impact on life in general in the triangle, the arts community as a whole is often ignored. It doesn't have the respect it deserves for the impact that it has and you're often underpaid and undervalued. Uh, one of our goals through creating art triangle work, works is to create a center point for the community and bring you together and advocate for you as a business community. Um, and by doing this, we're working to change the power and the presence you have as a big business community. We're a bit of a hybrid organization so that so that we're a, a 501c3 nonprofit and we work very closely with the local arts councils and other art services organizations here. But we also work with the small business support organizations and the economic development and workforce organizations around the region and around the state. So we are sort of have a leg in both hands. Um, day to day, our work is to create resources and tools and trainings to support you as, as, as businesses. Um, so we, one thing we've done, as you can see, is we've created a training program in cooperation with all of the five local arts councils called Artswell, and we are rolling out uh, um, training programs and professional development as fast as we can, and that's why we're all here tonight. Um, a little bit of housekeeping we, before we start. I think a lot, a lot of y'all are fairly Zoom savvy, but um, I think you've all got your names up. I think everybody's muted. But please try to let you, we get to the end where we're going to ask questions. Please try to stay muted so everyone can hear, uh, and we can unmute you, or you're going to mute yourself at the end if you have a question. Um, you can use chat if you want to start asking questions as we go along, just to kind of remember what your question is um, and to get in the order for question, for us to, to ask the questions at the end. Um, know that we are recording, uh, so um, so a lot of people don't, aren't aware that when you record, everything in the chat shows up in the record, um, even side conversations you're having with people. So just be aware of that as we record. Um, we will be sending you a survey after, and we really appreciate it if you could answer it because we would like to know how we're doing. Plus, we give you an opportunity to tell us uh, other programs you would like to see us do. And we have a lot of partners who can help us do our programming. And if you have a topic that we're not covering, we will certainly uh, want to cover that. Um, again, I'm excited to be here tonight. Excited to have to learn about healthcare. I'm excited to have Carrie Blackburn here. She is a working actor and a licensed independent health insurance agent from Greensboro, and she's focused on demystifying the healthcare marketplace for creatives. Uh, regardless of your field or your medium or your union status or the frequency or your traveling gigs. Her experience as an uninsured artist for the first two years out of her BFA program has led her to be passionate about providing creatives with the financial tools for a solid foundation in the critical years of freelancing gigs and uncertain income. And Carrie, I'm going to let you take it from here. Thank you so much, Beth. Thank you for having me. So I'm so happy to be here. And uh, like Beth said in the introduction, my motivation for going into this was that I was completely uninsured as an artist right as I was coming out of school. And um, so I wasn't covered at all. Um, and we all know that most early career arts gigs don't pay all that well. So I went through all of my time thinking that it was not an option for me, that it was just something I was going to have to wait until I joined a union to do or got a job that covered my health insurance. Um, 
So I really, I made it a joke all the time that no, I don't want to go do this dangerous thing. I don't want to go surfing. I don't have health insurance, ha ha ha. But it actually had a huge impact on my mental well-being and my ability to be fully present in the work that I was doing. Um, so then later, um, when I looked at the government health insurance marketplace going into actually the year 2020, I couldn't believe that with the income that I had and with my projected income for the next year, I could pay anywhere from $0 a month to maybe 30 for a healthcare plan that I would really, really use and appreciate. And it was just that I didn't have anyone to ask and I didn't have anywhere to go to. And it all seems completely overwhelming, especially in the current state of the uncertainty of the Affordable Care Act. And we'll absolutely get to that later on in the program um, because a lot of these things can change if that becomes repealed. So I'm just uh, really motivated because of that into helping other artists figure out um, how to go forward, how to make sure that you're not paying too much, but at the same time, making sure that you're covered for all the things that you could possibly need. So on that note, I'm gonna be sharing a screen for a, a little mini presentation. And uh, like Beth said, if you have questions along the way, just put them right down there in the chat or save them till the end. Either way is all good. All right. Okay, so first we're going to talk about just the basics of health insurance in general. So this might be a little bit repetitive for some of y'all. If that's the case, just, just hold tight. So the premium is what you pay per month just to keep your plan intact. That's what gets direct deposited out of your bank account every month. That's when you look at healthcare.gov and it shows you the plans. The monthly premium is probably what's gonna be the thing that comes up first. Then the copay is the transaction. So if you go to the doctor and then at the end of your visit, you go to the window at the end you hand the nice human your money, they say, have a great day. That's the copay that you pay. Um, and then your deductible is, the best way to think of it for me is kind of like a button. So once you pay a certain amount up to that deductible, the deductible is the button that gets pressed so that your coinsurance amount activates. And then your coinsurance is, the percentage that the insurance company pays for covered services once that deductible is met. So remember that coinsurance and copay are two different things and those are mixed up a whole lot. Even I didn't know the difference for quite a while. So then once the deductible is met, you have the coinsurance amount. And then once you hit the maximum out of pocket, that is the most money, worst case scenario you could possibly have to pay if something goes wrong and like you end up in the hospital. So once you reach the maximum out of pocket, coinsurance, that percentage doesn't matter anymore and the insurance will cover everything else. So those are just some basic things to build upon when you're looking at plans. So the types of plans. So these are universal among government marketplace plans, private plans, et cetera. So an HMO is going to be the most restrictive type of plan in that you will choose a primary care provider. It's referred to as a PCP most of the time. So that's who you'll go to all the time. And if you want to go to a specialist, you will need a referral most of the time from your primary care provider. And then they don't cover any kind of out of network costs. But because of this, HMOs are usually much cheaper premiums than the other plans that we're gonna talk about. So all of your care will be coordinated by your primary care provider, or some people call it like your family doctor. 
So then on the other end of the spectrum, a PPO is the least restrictive. So they have a network of providers that are contracted in and you can choose an in-network doctor for a lower price or an out-of-network doctor at a higher cost. And you don't need a referral to see a specialist, even though you can still choose a primary care physician if you want. Um, some states actually require it. North Carolina is not one of them. Um, so the great thing about PPOs is usually they mean that you can see someone anywhere. Like Cigna is a big PPO plan. So um, Actors' Equity Association, for example, since that is the industry I come from, that group plan usually works with a PPO so that actors, whether they are on the West Coast, the East Coast, wherever, can still see a doctor under that network. So then POS or a point of service plan is it's in the middle. So you'll have a primary care provider on an HMO type of network um, that'll coordinate your care, but you'll also have access to a bigger PPO kind of network. And those things are at a higher cost, but that out of network care is available to you if you need it. Um, but the HMO side of that plan will be more affordable. So again, the cost of that plan, as far as your monthly premium, is again gonna fall just about in the middle of HMO and PPO. And then EPO is very similar to a point of service plan and um, there's no, there's no out of network care. It's on a smaller network, but you still don't need a specialist referral. So, then the Affordable Care Act, now that we've talked about what the general shape of insurance looks like. So a big part of the Affordable Care Act is the essential health benefits. So every plan has to be ACA compliant. So any plan that's offered has to adhere to these unless they are for example, a short-term plan. And we'll get to those, but they sometimes don't adhere to Affordable Care Act guidelines, which is what can make them tricky and you have to ask more questions. But generally, these are the things that have to be covered no matter what. Some of the things include mental health and addiction services. A lot of people don't know about those. Um, physical therapy, um, Pregnancy, which is a huge pre-existing condition for a lot of people. Um, and then your prescription drugs, your emergency services, et cetera. So these are all the things that have to be covered under any kind of plan that you look at. So the levels of plans. Um, basically, what you're going to be looking at is the premium versus the coinsurance amount. And generally, as you'll see in this image, the lower the premium is, the lower the coinsurance amount is also going to be. So a bronze plan is usually going to be the very cheapest on the market. However, the insurance company is only gonna pay 60% once you've met that deductible. And a lot of times the bronze plans are the high deductible health plans, which we'll get to in a moment. And then um, the silver plans, even though the coinsurance amount isn't extremely high, the silver plans are the only ones that apply for cost sharing reductions. So you'll see that as CSRs on the North Carolina um, healthcare.gov website. So that'll be additional savings off of a plan. So most of the time, your cost monthly can be pretty similar on a silver plan if you get a cost sharing reduction as it would have been on a bronze plan, but you do get more coverage and your deductible ends up being a good bit lower. So if you do qualify for cost sharing reductions, which I'll get to in a moment with the subsidy amounts, I would absolutely recommend a silver plan um, 
just because you end up having to pay so much out of pocket with a bronze plan, even though they still work great in case of emergencies. And then gold and platinum is if you anticipate because of, say, a chronic condition, you go to specialists a lot, you really, um, you might anticipate going to the hospital a couple times a year. If you think that the care that you're going to need on a regular basis is worth the higher premium, then that's the kind of plans that you'll go with. So generally, the bronze plan is used as a just in case type of plan. Um, and then there are catastrophic plans, um, which I don't have on here. They're a little bit cheaper than the bronze plans. They're through the government marketplace and they are basically exclusively worst case scenario. They're even cheaper than bronze, but recently they do allow for three um, regular doctor visits per year. So if you're someone that never goes to the doctor but wants to be protected, if you were, say, to get in a car accident, then that could be a great option. Um, okay, so next is the subsidies. So the big thing to remember about subsidies is that different than other sorts of government aid, they do not go by your taxes from the premiums previous year. They are actually an advance on a tax credit for the next year. So because of that, it's going off of your projected income as opposed to your past income, which, as we know, gets particularly tricky if you are an artist with income that you don't always know what it's going to be 12 months in advance. So there are a couple different ways to go about the subsidy application process. So you can choose how much of that tax credit to use. Um, my, my personal recommendation, uh, you can also talk to a tax professional about this if you have one, but um, just your average of what you think you usually make per year um, for a lot of people in the live entertainment industry. Um, for most of us, that income for 2021 is projected to be lower. So um, if you're involved in live events, I might go with the, um, the lesser side of um, months that you've earned, multiply that by 12, put it in. So if you make from 100% and 400% of the national poverty level, which for 2021 is $12,760 in North Carolina, you qualify for a subsidy. And then um, if you make between $12,760 and $31,900, um, this is also adjusted gross income. So that's gross income minus things like individual retirement contributions and um, certain other deductions. Um, so between $12,760 and $31,900, you can also qualify for that cost sharing reduction, which is what I mentioned for the silver plans. And then there's Another bracket between 31,900 and 51,040, where you still do get a subsidy, but you don't get a cost sharing reduction on those silver plans. Um, so you can choose how much of the subsidy to use in case your income should go up. So uh, for me, for instance, because I, I believe in complete transparency. So last year I applied, um, and the cost of the plan that I signed up for, I think, was $14 a month, um, which is excellent. So, however, I pay $25 a month so that if my income as an artist were to go up this year, then I wouldn't be surprised with um with an extra adjustment on my taxes later, um, it's kind of like getting an extra amount deducted from a paycheck. Um, you can also, if you have no idea what you're going to make and you would rather just not have to worry about it, you can even pay the entire plan amount 
and receive the subsidy as a full tax credit the next year and just get back exactly what you're going to get back and um, don't worry about adjusting it as you go. You can also log in. Again, this is going to be on healthcare.gov. Um, at any point during the year and you can report an income or life change so that um, if you, for instance, get a, a new job that's going to pay you a whole lot more, but suddenly you're thinking about how much more you're going to owe on that monthly premium, you can go ahead and log it in um, and change that then so there aren't any surprises on your taxes because no one wants surprises on your taxes. That's terrible. Um, so, and if you earn less income than you projected, then you will get that extra money back. So, um, you also, if your job provides coverage, and <laughs> this is a little bit complicated, so just bear with me, but if your job provides coverage, it's worth it to see if that coverage is deemed affordable by the Affordable Care Act. Um, and in this case, affordable means that at least 60% of covered benefits or the premiums would cost you no more than 9.5% of your annual income after tax credits. So most plans are considered affordable. They, they do try and make sure that that's the case. But if you're looking at a job and it just doesn't seem right and it does not seem like the money they're offering you is going to work with the coverage they're offering you. It is definitely worth it to go in and um, do that math for yourself. Um, because if your workplace coverage is not considered affordable, then you can, you'll have to get them to fill out a form uh, and acknowledge that their healthcare is not affordable, um, but they're required by law to do so. And then you can apply for a marketplace plan. So high deductible health plans are um, the bronze plans that I was talking about. So the good parts of them as, um, as denoted here. So the monthly cost is going to be the lowest. Um, for most people, it'll be between $0 and maybe 45 um, depending on your county. Um, and then also, um, if you only go to the doctor every once in a while, you'll definitely save because you're not, um, you're not paying for a service that you're not using, uh, which is the whole gamble of insurance, but it's still hard when you're really trying to make your budgeting work. So the biggest upside of a high deductible health plan is that it's HSA eligible. So an HSA or a health savings account is a savings account that grows tax-free. So you can contribute pre-tax dollars and they will continue to grow. It rolls over and you can use that money for things like copays and deductibles. You can use them for contact solution, um, prescription drugs, some over-the-counter items, um, and then some dental or vision expenses depending on your plan. So that can be that can be a really great thing to have um, and is an extra little bonus if you're again not anticipating to go to the doctor a whole lot. Um, so the catastrophic plans I mentioned earlier are going to have the lowest priced premiums, but they're also only for people either under 30 or have had a qualifying life event. Um, but the downsides of high deductible health plans of any kind is if you have a chronic illness, you're going to have to pay all of that out of pocket, which can get really costly really fast. Um, and then that a lot of people don't end up going to the doctor when they need it because they know that they will be paying it 100% out of pocket until they meet that deductible. Um, and that's the whole reason that you have health insurance is to feel like you can go to the doctor when you need it and not be stressing at home over things like, can I get a COVID test? Is it free? Things like that. Um, so 
special enrollment periods. Um, open enrollment period, as you all probably know, is coming up. Um, it's going to be November 1st through December 15th of 2020 for, 20, for 2021. Um, but outside of that, there are special enrollment periods that mean you can enroll in a marketplace plan at any time. And one of those is turning 26 or otherwise losing coverage from your parents. Um, also, if, if the Affordable Care Act is repealed, um, that is one of the mandates in the Affordable Care Act that children are covered up to the age of 26. So if you're younger and that is repealed, um, you will be eligible for a special enrollment period. We hope that that does not happen, but um, just so you know. Um, Obviously, you, losing your job or becoming ineligible for union coverage, a lot of unions are changing their eligibility um, effective January 1st. So um, if that's the case, open enrollment is definitely the best time to be looking at plans because, um, and I'll, um, I'll reiterate, reiterate this later, but if you want a plan to be effective by the first of the month, you generally need to have it all signed up, squared away by the 15th of the month prior. Um, so relocating permanently is also a special enrollment period. So if you have no idea if you might accept a job in another state and that is causing you to think twice about getting coverage, don't worry about it. If that happens, you can again log on uh, to healthcare.gov and report a life change. Say that you've moved and you can per, um, pursue a new plan accordingly. So um, also certain changes in income. Um, if you if you get a new job that makes you ineligible for an Affordable Care Act plan, they're not gonna make you pay for it anyway. You can obviously switch over to that new coverage. Um, so then as far as job or union coverage loss, um, there is COBRA. So generally in insurance, group plans are going to cost by far the least um, as opposed to individual or um, family plans. So any kind of coverage that you have through your job or your union um, or any other kind of, we'll talk about other organiza organizations that um, have group coverage later, but that's going to be the cheapest, uh, the best for your money, shall we say. So some people decide to enact COBRA when they lose employment-based coverage, uh, and that's going to last 18 to um, 36 months. If you qualify, you have to go on and fill out some stuff to see if you'll qualify for a 36-month extension. Um, it's only for companies with more than 20 employees, and then you have 60 days to enact that coverage after um, uh, after you find out you're losing your job. So your employer has to notify you. And then, so how COBRA works is it can be effective even to the day after your employer-based coverage ends. And you will get the exact same coverage that you had, same doctors, same prescriptions, same care. However, how group coverage works and how employer coverage works is your employer pays a percentage of the premium and you pay the other percentage. So for COBRA, all of that goes to you because the employer is no longer paying that coverage. So you are going to be paying a whole lot more. Um, and that's the biggest thing that um, keeps people away from enacting COBRA. Um, there is a bill floating around in the Senate to get subsidies for um, COBRA premiums, but who knows? Um, so that that's the main thing that keeps people from enacting COBRA. But also, if you lose your job, you can go in to healthcare.gov. Um, you can also do that if um, you do COBRA for a few months and you cannot handle it financially, you can always, you can always change. So specialists. So 
this is something that's specific to different types of artists, um, especially artists in which um, your body is somehow your instrument. Um, so specialists are something that is often um, more expensive on health plans. Um, so make sure, this is like my biggest thing, make sure when you're looking at a plan, even if you haven't needed that kind of specialist yet, think about what you could possibly need to see, like something that could go wrong that would really affect your livelihood, also your well-being just as a person, um, and who you would want to see, who is the best in your area. I was talking to a singer the other day who um, really wanted to be able to go to an otolaryngologist from Duke because Duke is the best around, but a lot of the local plans um, don't cover Duke. So um, if she had signed up for one of those, she would have had to pay out of pocket. Um, so make sure even if it's something you don't need right now to go and see who it would make you feel good to have taken care of you if something were to go wrong in that way. Um, and you can check the network on again, healthcare.gov or any um, insurance company website as you're, um, as you're looking at plans, you can look for I think it's under like a find my doctor feature. You can type in who you might want to go to and it'll show you the plans that cover that. Um, sometimes you can even log in more than one and find out um, where that Venn diagram is and the plans that would keep you covered and everything you could need. Um, so the biggest thing with that is just anticipate um, what you could need in the future because paying for a specialist out of pocket is no joke. Um, so, um, hopefully you are able to find something on the government marketplace that meets your needs because, um, that's, that's what subsidized, um, healthcare aid is for. Um, however, if it doesn't work for you, if you don't qualify for a subsidy, also, um, there's the Medicaid gap. Um, in North Carolina specifically. So if you, um, if you make less than 100% of the federal poverty level, you don't, um, you don't have any government options um, because the Medicaid expansion has not been accepted in North Carolina at this time. So there's a big gap for say grad school students um, who do not fall under their um, parents' insurance anymore, but also don't have enough income to qualify for an Affordable Care Act plan. Um, you can really get stuck in a bad situation there. Um, again, sometimes the best thing to do there is just to get in contact with an agent that can look at all these different options uh, because a lot of times schools and training programs will have insurance mandates of the deductible can only be this much and it has to cover this much out of pocket um, especially during covid they don't want to be liable um, so if something like that is going on, um, you definitely have other options. And of course, like many things in life, the key is being creative. So here are some other places that you can find um, specifically group coverage. Um, again, Medicaid, not yet in North Carolina, maybe at some point, um, but if you move to most other states, I think there are only 12 that don't have the Medicaid expansion right now. Um, so your local chamber of commerce uh, usually does have a group health insurance option. Um, and usually group health insurance is less expensive than buying it individually. Um, individual private insurance is crazy, crazy, crazy expensive. That's why I'm not even speaking on it. Um, if, you, if you want to look into it, contact me, but uh, it's, it's crazy. So, the Freelancers Union uh, does have national options for plans. So you do have to pay to join that union, but then after that, there's a there's a lot of other benefits too. Um, the same with the Chamber of Commerce um, that you'll get a whole lot of different benefits, um, marketing benefits, healthcare benefits, um, 
the Professional Photographers of America has group health insurance plans. Um, the National Association for the Self-Employed. Um, also a key note for anyone who's self-employed, they do change it um, year to year, but depending on how you do your deductions, um, you may be able to deduct up to 100% of your insurance premiums. Um, so it is worth looking into. Um, again, talk to a tax professional about that. But um, if you're able to deduct 100% of your premiums, then maybe you don't have to stress quite so much about how much that monthly, monthly premium is. Um, PEOs. So sometimes people use things like Gusto and uh, Zenefits for um, payroll, things like that. But if you're paying for those services, they also have group um, healthcare plans that you can go to. Um, and then short term companies. So this is you can have plans for up to a year with short term companies. However, I personally think that they are the best fit for if you are actively looking for a job that you think is going to um, give you full, um, full benefits in the future, or um, if you, for some reason, missed the open enrollment period, but really want to be covered due to something like COVID-19 or otherwise, and you just want coverage up until that next open enrollment period. Um, so I mentioned this earlier, but these plans are not ACA compliant. So most of the time they do not cover pre-existing conditions. They don't cover things like physical therapy, mental health care, pregnancy, um, but they will cover things like going to the hospital or going to the doctor, going to a specialist. And because they're not ACA applying and they don't have to cover all of those things, you can really pick and choose um, exactly what benefits you want and only pay for those. Um, so for some, for some people that works. Um, Mental health care options, because this is so crucial for everyone, artists, but also just the world. Um, so again, I want to be transparent here that um, we are absolutely at risk about at the Affordable Care Act either changing significantly or being repealed as a whole. Um, and the biggest effect that that has is on pre-existing conditions and both depression and um, anxiety are considered um, pre-existing conditions. So even if your healthcare costs are not going up right now uh, because you've been diagnosed with depression, anxiety, et cetera, they could go up in the future if the Affordable Care Act is repealed. Um, so some people because of this would rather go off of their health insurance network to seek care. It is a completely personal choice. Um, either has its own pros and cons um, because currently Affordable Care Act compliant plans do have to cover mental health care. So um, these are just a few different affordable ways that you can go. Um, so the um, AADA is a great place to start. Their website um, can help you find a local provider, um, find local places that you can get a prescription. Um, they have a whole lot of absolutely fantastic resources and the people there are just incredibly compassionate. Um, also universities, um, universities that have grad programs for um, people looking to be counselors will often do discounted um, rate options. And it's not just someone winging it, there will also be someone else in the room guiding them. Um, it's like a like an observed session. So if that's something that you're comfortable with. Um, and then the National Asi uh, Alliance of Mental Illness also has um, local options and um, Sometimes there will be federally funded um, centers that you can go to as well. So 
Some people also go the online therapy route, um, which especially now is is very viable. So a lot of people do talk space and um, that's, I believe, a weekly um, fee. And then Open Path Collective is, I believe it is, yeah, it's $59 for a membership that's lifetime. And then it is $30 to $60 per session for an individual. Um, these can be in person, online. Um, you can find someone local to you. Uh, it's also on an honor system. You don't have to go through the trouble of sending someone your tax information to let them deem you worthy of lower cost Um counseling because sometimes that can be demeaning. Um, then uh, for drug coverage, because of course, if you go to therapy and they give you um, an option for something that you can take that they feel like can help, um, but you don't have somewhere to get that prescription filled um, without a psychiatrist um, prescription, then that's another problem entirely. So there are a lot of different companies, more so than I knew of, um, and I actually have people in my life who use, who use these and I never knew. Um, so AstraZeneca, Forest, Lily, um, Pfizer, uh, Genoa, I think is how it's called. Um, so it's negotiated costs for um, psychiatric prescriptions. So um, sometimes they will take your tax information, but generally you can talk to them and say, hey, this is what my income is right now. This is what I need. How can you help? And they'll negotiate that cost down for you. And most of the time mail that prescription right to your door. Um, also negotiating, <laughs> this is not fun. Um, but um, if you are paying for therapy out of pocket, you can um, usually negotiate with a provider or someone from an association like the AADA can negotiate those kind of costs down for you. Um, again, they're an excellent place to start. Um, all right, so yeah, so that's so that's actually, um, that's all I have right now. Uh, I do wanna add, because I forgot to mention this when we talked about short-term care, um, but those plans will provide you with a discount card. Um, so even if they don't have say like flat copays, um, they will have a discount card that you can show at doctors, um, specialist offices when you're getting a prescription, things like that, um, that can help again, negotiate some of those costs down. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what I have. It's, it's all just, um, very confusing, but also you don't, um, you don't have to understand all of the individual nuances because they're, they can absolutely be overwhelming. So, um, and that is what agents are for. So especially um, the Affordable Care Act agents that if you go online, you can type in, find, find local help, um, find someone to talk to in person. Um, but generally, again, to be transparent, um, it is not a particularly lucrative type of plan to sell. So most of the time people who are doing it are doing it because they care. Um, so we'll give you more honest advice than someone who is a captive agent for one particular insurance company or selling private insurance um, because that's when the commission amounts are high and people get trips for selling a certain amount and things like that. Um, so yes, that's, that's what I have. Uh, so if you have, okay. So are you reading the questions yourselves? Uh, yeah. So since I'm done, that's cool with me. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so as someone who will now be navigating the, uh, AEA versus ACA plans, do you have any thoughts on their new guidelines? Um, so 
For any of y'all who don't know, uh, AEA is the Actors' Equity Association, and um, now they have upped the amount of weeks that you have to work as an actor in order to um, qualify for coverage. Um, they have separate amounts that you have to work to qualify for six months of coverage versus one year. Um, so my thought on it, um, I'm actually going to be going um, another route through uh, a second job that I'm going to be working um, that's providing um, a high deductible health plan. But um, my thought is that um, I would not want to be stuck in a situation where half of the year had passed and I didn't make those qualifications. Um, I, I would rather start with an Affordable Care Act plan and go off of it if I need to, if I get a job that's gonna get me 15 weeks at an equity theater, um, rather than go the other way around. Um, also, um, yeah, so that's cool. Yeah, got a thumbs up. Thank you. <laughs> we have. I can give a question. I'll show you come off mute. I just. Yeah, can you hear me? Is yeah. Micah. Um, Hi, Micah? I have a question. Hey, how are you? Uh, the, I have a question about the open enrollment. What? Mm -hmm. I mean, situations can happen any time of the year. Why is it just designated to those uh, 70 days or whatever? Yeah, it's, um, there's not really a great reason. I've got to be honest with you. So it's, it's mainly that plan, it, the plans can be broken up by entire calendar year. So like you can be able to look at what the rates are for, but because different companies are going to change their rates from year to year, like the premium is going to go up or the co-pays are going to go up. So it could be broken up by fiscal year or calendar year, essentially. So I personally, <laughs> I don't think that special enrollment periods should be as strict as they are because um, short-term healthcare plans um, are, are just a, a, a way that is not ACA compliant, um, that kind of just capitalizes on people being worried. Um, but, also most of it, like things that can happen uh, as far as job loss or income loss will qualify you for a special enrollment period. Um, so what about divorce? Uh, yeah, that would be, um, that would be a household change. So uh, that, that would be a special enrollment period too. Okay. Thanks. Um, all right. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. We have a question from Jeanette. Last year in the marketplace, there were not any plans um, that covered Duke and related doctors and clinics for those of us living in Durham um, and that's our home hospital. That's crazy. Um, so I'm still on COBRA, which is not sustainable financially, but I'm concer concerned about giving up my in-count tear. Absolutely. Okay, so um, I can tell you that I've looked at the, are you in Wake County? She, she, she's in Durham, if she's, yeah, Durham County. Oh, Durham County, okay, fantastic. So, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, so I've looked at them, they've just released what the 2021 plans are for, um, for Wake County. And I think Ambetter covers, um, covers the Duke doctors uh, for 2021. Um, I can absolutely look at, um, at Durham County for you as well. Um, but I would think that if they're covered in a neighboring county, there should be, there should be at least one. Um, I think it's Blue Cross that doesn't cover Duke at this point. But um, and better, I wanna say the other one was Bright Health um that's covering duke next year but um we can also absolutely look at that um on our own time um so and i i would i would say too that the few things that i did look up last year 
also like when you would click on a doctor that was a, available in a plan of yeah. course they have to be accepting new patients and that was always that was very <sighs> frequently a situation so like i think the the first 3 kind of doctors or clinics mm -hmm. that i looked up none of them were accepting new patients and so i don't want to get trapped in that right um, cycle i mean i knock on wood pretty healthy and all that of course but it's like it just is a big, um, it's confusing, I guess. Question mark. So do you have, um, do you have a specific provider that you go to now within the Duke doctors that is covered yeah, by I, Cobra? I, okay. I still have a really great Cigna plan, but it's very, mm -hmm. very, very expensive. But if I was, to, like I said, I looked last year at the marketplace and mm -hmm. for $150 more per month, I can keep everything that I'm happy with and used to. But if I go down, then I have some crazy high deductible. I mean, it's just the amount difference between a marketplace plan and what I'm paying, even though what I'm paying is ridiculously, ridiculously high. It just for me to have to start all over again with new doctors that right. aren't even available and I would have to go to a hospital. I mean, um, one of the UNC hospitals is really not that far away, but mm -hmm. you know, when I think about if I was in an accident, where would they take me? They'd take me to Duke because that's right, right here. So it just for this particular area of Durham, I mean, yeah. it's wonderful. We have so many options, but at the same token, it's like the, um, the insurance market doesn't account for any of that. Yeah. They're all like fighting with each other to have a monopoly. Um, yeah, we can. So you said you're on Cigna. I hopefully I know Cigna expanded their network a good bit this year, so there may be a Cigna marketplace plan this year that would mean things wouldn't change that much. Um, again, they'll everything should be coming coming out for 2021. They're kind of all rolling them out this week, so I would think by this Friday, well, by this Friday they all have to be because it starts um, November 1st, but. Um, as we go along this week, they will, um, they'll roll out what is covered where. Um, and then, yeah, I, the advice I would give to you is a, a, a to see if there's a signal marketplace plan that would, I, I think just like take out some of the extra steps. Um, and then, especially if they don't have a high deductible plan, because those are just <sighs> needlessly stressful. Um, but other than that, um, go into, um, I, I guess go find the doctors that you might want to go to that are taking new patients and then plug them back into the find my doctor feature on the healthcare.gov website. Um, just so which, like, yeah, which sounds good, but in reality, that doesn't always work smoothly because it either. changes right yeah even even doctors lists that are supposedly updated even on Cigna which is a huge company I mean right. half the time things aren't updated on there so it's just frustrating all right all the way around but I do appreciate yeah. your suggestions and I'll look to see what's new this year but I'm anticipating this year's probably not going to be that significantly different maybe maybe next year we can be hopeful because I can stay on Cobra for another quite a bit which is good but it's just great I mean I could pay half my mortgage for what I'm paying monthly for the yeah. Cobra which is crazy so anyways it's, the costs are so high yeah yeah but thank you for your suggestions yeah absolutely I'm sorry I don't yeah. It, it is a very tough situation and, and we'll yeah. see what the weeks um, is. Yeah. Any other questions out there or 
Um, as as we find out more information, we'll be rolling it out. We're going to watch our for hopefully you're all following us in all the various social media outlets. But we will, as we find information, we'll be sending it out. Um, Beth and yes. How how challenging is it? And maybe Carrie knows the answer to this. I mean, how if if some of the things like Chamber of Commerce and cities can have group plans, how challenging is it to put together a group plan? It, it is something has been discussed. Um, you know, and and I, yeah, I I you know I can't speak at a term, but we have looked at um, the possibility um of doing one um how to do it how to get enough the numbers high enough that it would be better than mm -hmm. than what you're already looking at is right. our challenge um and in, and in, you know i'll be blunt is you know our challenge is we are a small staffed organization so we we are um trying to find someone to help us get the capacity and staff to do the research, but we have talked about it because it seems like an obvious next step. One um, possibility would be do it statewide, and then we, and mm -hmm. then possibly, I mean, some of y'all are part of organizations. Then you know, could organizations, um, you know, join in some special way to to cover their staffs? Um, it, yes, we're looking. The answer, the short answer is yes. We're looking. <laughs> Um, but uh, not for this year. <laughs> not going to happen in the next month. Sorry, no. Right. It, it is. It is a long-term project. Um, yeah, it has a lot of moving parts. Um, but I personally would love to see happen. It was something that we, our platform, would be a great place um, to do that. And we're the only ones that do it in this. What we do in the state. Um, it's been interesting about COVID. We're working a lot more statewide than we ever have although we still focus on the region you know we're constantly being asked to do more work statewide so it's going to be an interesting couple of years yeah um but yeah i like the way you're thinking <laughs> i like the way you're thinking <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see um it has been interesting that um there has been a change in the law, and Carrie, you may know this, the change in the law about two years ago that allowed um, sort of nonprofits and things to mm -hmm. create, um, create, collect, collect, create, um, in other words, saying, how, how do you say that? To create um, groups, um, to create groups, groups. And before that, we couldn't do it, but now we can. Or we would have had to create a separate entity, but apparently now we can. Now they've changed the law, so we can do it. Yeah, Mike, did you have another question? He's what? Uh, yeah, actually, I do actually. So you know, when I go to the uh, the uh, the ACA the healthcare.gov site, mm -hmm. is is the navigation as simple as what what you described as bronze, platinum, and all that, or is it more in depth as to copays and all that? It. It can basically show as much as you want it to. Actually, um, hold on a second. I may be able to just walk through it a little bit. That might be yeah. Um, I can only see so much um, because enrollment isn't open Is yet. Um, but let me let me log in and get this. Um, kind of show you. Um, so. Basically, okay, let me, let me share my screen really quick. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll share. So I'm just gonna put in um, like my, my zip code right now. Um, uh, all of this is optional, fine. Um, who needs health coverage? Me. Um, Okay, I'm not eligible for any of these things right now. Um, my 2021 household, household income, let's say 25K. Um, so this tells you um, how much subsidy you're gonna get uh, per month on your premium and that you also qualify for a cost sharing reduction. Um, 
And then you can type in any hospitals that you have. Um, I wish I, I wish I had put in a Durham County zip code. Um, dang it. So um, then it will show you, yeah. So it'll kind of show you all these things. So you can, um, that's just silver and bronze. Yeah, so you can see silver and whether it's an HMO or a PPO. Um, it shows you the deductibles, um, right, health. So again, like the HMOs um, are going to usually be cheaper. Um, but then like the out-of-pocket max is higher. Doctors are 50, specialists are 100. Um, and then you can also go in individual, individual plans um, and click doctors or specific drugs. Um, you can also compare a few plans. So I can click this one. Um, what, how are we, how are we sorting these? Um, so let's say I would I would really like to not pay more than this much, but also I I don't really want a high deductible either. Um, oh, so there's so there's just this one. Um, or if the deductible was higher, um, there's also am better, and you can you can click a couple and then um compare all the individual features um and your primary care costs um prescription directory and then and then click whichever one you want so it's it's kind of like you can do um you can find as much information about it as as you feel is relevant at that time uh, yeah, yeah. And the billing, all that stuff is, it's all clean and it's all, it's, it's all one-stop shop. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be like any other kind of shopping online. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, and while we're, while we're here, this is, this is my individual, um, information. Um, my I linked first is the site that I just had up um, and then the second is my my calendar just for like a free appointment to to figure out what what is important to you and um, what different modes you could go around to get it. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? <laughs> I didn't sound like it. Thanks. Yeah, cool. Everybody, just real quick before we go, um, upcoming programs, just so you all know, um, on November 11th, we have, for all y'all that have moved on, we have um, the another free program where the lawyers are talking about, I think, actually, I think they have about dollars um, where the lawyers are talking about legal issues. And um, I'm going to mute you, Mike. So, puppy selling teaching and performing online uh, and we're getting a lot of questions um from teaching artists and performing artists about what they can and can't do in using other people's work when mm -hmm. they're teaching when they're working online uh, for our arts administrators we have another fundraising program um we have very popular program is called instagram as a sales channel for artists that is now sold out twice it's a three-day like three successive days where they learn something and then they apply it and then they apply it again. Um, and it has sold out very quickly the second time. So we're going to be adding a third one probably in December. Um, craft entrepreneurship. I don't know if any of y'all are craft artists, but our eight week craft entrepreneurship program, which is a long um, you know, program with homework and training and forms a cohort. Um, that sold out last time. We are doing another cohort that starts in January in Raleigh. Um, City of Raleigh Economic Development is helping us fund that. Um, it is go moving from a, it is, it obviously it's online. It was supposed to be in person, but it's online. It is becoming a 10 week program. They have two local craft artists, um, 
have are running it, um, including Cynthia Dice, our Arts Well Program Administrator. And so it's they felt it needs to be expanded. So it's going to be a 10 week program. And also for those of you all working on taxes, we Alex Lehman, our our fa everyone's favorite CPA for the artists for the arts um, is doing an accounting program in December. We haven't settled a date yet, but it'll be the first week in December. Um, and if any of you all heard Alex speak, he's really wonderful. So if you you know have tax questions, save them for Alex's talk. Um, any other questions for me or for Carrie? Hearing none. Thanks everybody for coming. Amazing. Thank you all so much.